Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Invisible Mind podcast for Wednesday, February 3rd, 2016. So it's a kind of a warmish. What's the temperature right now? 51 degrees. So yeah, it's kind of warm. Oh, and uh, Sierra is still missing as of now. But yeah, 51 degrees is, is all it is. I was out. I've got the snow sticks at the end of my driveway. And, you know, for all the good they've done, we haven't really had much, much snow to need them. But one of them is starting to tilt a bit. And so I thought, well, I'm going to try to put it back in. And I pulled it out and shoved it back in the ground. And I thought we'd had enough cold days that the ground was frozen. But psh, not even close. It just sank into it like a hot knife in the butter. So it's like, okay, well... That's good. I got to uh, got to you know reposition that so it's not leaning out. So that that was cool. But uh, yeah, I guess we've had more warm weather than I thought. That the ground isn't even isn't even really frozen. We got a bucket of rain. I mean, it was it was raining really hard last night. If it had been snow, we would have been a significant snowfall because it was just pouring. Which has been the pattern. You know, most of the time we get precipitation this winter, we get we get rain, which is maybe part of the reason why Puxatani Phil did not see his shadow yesterday. Uh, yeah, we should have watched Groundhog Day yesterday. I didn't even think about that. That was stupid. We should have done that. Oh well to watch that again soon. One of the things we did do yesterday is we finally sat down and watched <clears throat> the live performance of Grease that Fox did. And they did a really good job and they really upped the ante. You know, we've been watching, you know, NBC has been doing, they did the Sound of Music and they did the Wiz and they did S- Peter Pan You know, so, and they've been good performances. I mean, they, they, they've been fun to watch. We've enjoyed them. But, you know, Fox really kind of, you know, decided, well, how can we up the ante? And and it wasn't that really that they were performing a play. Because NBC's got a very, you know, you're watching a play. You may, it's, you're usually on, like, one sound stage, But it's, it's kind of contained there. And it, it's... You know, very, very much got the sense that you could be watching a play where, you know, scenery is moved in and out. You know, as as needed. Whereas with Greece, it was you know they filmed the movie live, pretty much, because they didn't. You know, they had a number of sets, but they didn't limit themselves to. It wasn't like a play. They were in different portions of this back lot to the point where they actually had to take little carts to go from one location to the other. Uh, and they showed some shots of, uh, you know, like a, 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 one of the cast members would would leave a particular area and then they, they had the next scene where they maybe had a song or something to do. And so they would hop on this cart and the cart would take them to the other other place and they would... And they would, uh, you know, hop out and run in and take their spot. And then when it was their time to go, they would go. So, it was kind of cool. It was, it was pretty neat. Yeah, and they did, you know, they got the, you got the carnival thing at the end. And, you know, I guess, you know, spoilers here. But, you know, they had a car, you know, like in the in the movie and presumably the show, they had this little carnival thing. But it was, it was just like, they've got this gym set. And so it was all in the gym and you had like little booths with carnival games, but that was about it. You know, it was kind of a lower scale than, than what you saw in the movie for Greece. And... But then while they're doing one of the ending songs, 
they all leave that set and they're and they're singing and they're leaving the set and running out of the set and they get in these carts and they're driving through the area, driving through the little you know, with all the different things and and so you know drive past the high school or the outdoor set for the high school and, and, and they're singing while they're doing this and whatnot and then they get to the part where they've got an actual carnival. They've got you know the Ferris wheel and the other rides and whatever and that's where they do the final dance numbers and the curtain calls and everything. Uh, the woman that played uh, Sandy, the female lead, she had, you, they were obviously going for an Olivia Newton-John vibe. Her singing voice was very similar, I thought. Uh, the guy who played uh, Danny Zuko, John Travolta's character, um, didn't really sing like him, but he did a good job. I mean, he, he, he had his own style of singing, and that was fine. They did have a lot of a lot of uh, callbacks to the original movie. They had the woman who played Frenchie in the movie. She played a waitress in the diner, and uh, one of the the guys that played one of the T birds in the movie played like the TV producer. And it was funny because they came out together for their curtain call, and I don't know if they were they were their originals, but they kind of looked like it. You know, he had a T-Birds jacket on that was like, you know, how how leather will kind of turn turn on this brown faded kind of look, and she had a a, a pink ladies uh, jacket on. So I don't know. You know, once again, I don't know if these were the actual jackets from the movie, but you know, they were at least. You know, giving a nod to what they played before. The other really interesting cast note was there was this woman that was the shop teacher. And that was played by Eve Plum, who was uh, Jan Brady, if I'm, if I'm remembering the correct Brady. So you can see it a little bit, but it was, it was a little tough. It was a little tough to tell, but it was enjoyable. So... If you haven't seen it and you like Grease and you like musicals, I, it's probably online. You probably find it. Uh, it was it was a fun it was a fun watch <sighs> to uh, to see it, and it was it was a good cast. It's it's kind of it's kind of cool though that they continue to they continue the tradition that NBC has had of you know for the most part not having established names, you know, letting these be a showcase for maybe people that. You know, aren't, aren't as well known. You know, instead of you know, casting My, Miley Cyrus as Sandra D, which I don't know that she could pull that off. But um, the girl played Riz, the woman who played Rizzo did an excellent job, especially because I think her father died like that morning or the day before, and uh, yeah, she she did a really good. I mean, really, the whole cast did a did a really good job, and it was really cool how they did some of the stuff. You know. They they were doing the grease lightning thing, and they got the old ratty car there, and they kind of they kind of uh, panned to the side while these guys are dancing, and they had the uh, these guys are dancing, and and then when they pan back, instead of the old crappy looking car, they've got the the snazzy looking dream car that's you know got. A, you know, Stanzy paint job and, and all this stuff, and, and and the guys have pulled off their pulled off their you know gray mechanics coveralls to have these really snazzy sparkly blue coveralls you know, for the dance number and and all this, and then you know toward the end of it they they fade back and and uh, they, they pan away again, come back, and there's a crappy car, and they're back in their gray overalls. And I think they did like a three piece thing there. The best part of that was the costume designer, and they actually showed a little bit of this, but there was this one scene where one of the pink ladies is singing about her marine boyfriend, or one of them, and she had on like a blue nightgown. And you could see, at one point, they were, they, they were kind of panned in on her, and you could see her from the shoulders up, and you could see that it's like a you know, it was a strap thing with no sleeves. And you could see the blue strap of the nightgown, but below that you could see 
a red strap. And I thought, well, that was an odd choice to give her a red bra underneath her blue nightgown. But it turns out that wasn't the case because they had this this bit where, you know, as she's, he kind of goes into a fantasy land and the wall kind of opens up and she walks through. And she's now like singing at a USO show and they had all these sailors. They had like a live studio audience there. Uh, and they used them as, as kind of like extras, you know, for, for some of the scenes in the gymnasium and for this. So they had a bunch of sailors that were, that were there. And... And she had pulled off the blue thing, and she had a red dress on, which is what the red straps were. And so, so she does a song, and and uh, she's got three of the other uh, pink ladies uh, that are suddenly now in like uh, quasi army uniforms, and you know, they, they do the song, and and then you know fantasy time is over, and the wall opens up, and she slips back, and she's back in blue again. And what they did is she had three layers on. So she had a blue layer. She pulled that off when it, when it was panned in. And then she had the red on. And then when they got back, you know, they, they, they I think they, they panned in on her face again. And she pulled the red off. And she had another blue nightgown on underneath that. And uh, they actually showed uh, at one point. It's like a little snippet at commercial break showing how she would pull the red off. And there was the, there was the blue nightgown and she just had to smooth it down a little bit it was kind of cool that was that was kind of neat seeing how they did you know did all the costume changes and they must use a lot of, of rip away clothing <laughs> for that so they, you know, some of them they had to be quite fat and, you know so they get back to the bedroom and there's the three that were singing in the uso uniforms and they're back in they're back in uh you know wearing their pajamas or whatever you know rizzo had on like a pair of underpants and a shirt and that was it so They had to put that stuff on and rip it off, so it was it was, it was pretty pretty neat from a uh, you know costume standpoint. They had to, they had a lot to do and they had to make it so it was easy to put on and easy to take off. And it looked like they had the timing of you know, getting from point A to point B on this complex of of various sets, you know, pretty well defined. So yeah, that was cool. Anyway. I think I'm going to let that be that. I will be back tomorrow, and I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.